What's up everybody, welcome back, my name's Josh, and today we're talking about becoming a published author, or actually, accidentally becoming a published author. For people that do know that I've written and published a book, I do get questions on what was the process, how did you get started, that kind of stuff. So today I wanted to talk about how I got started, why I call it an accident essentially, and also a little bit about the cost in really ROI because we do talk about financial freedom here. So let's get started. So the first thing has to be how this all started and then it kind of segues into the the why I did it, right? And the, the how it all started was I have always been somebody that has kept a journal. Maybe not as consistent as I would like, but that journal has been life lessons, financial advice to myself, things that I've learned, things that I've learned in my career, anything that I've picked up along the way. And really a place to write down and jot down my story and my, my emotions and things like that and I'll be able to look back at it. Well, five years, four years into my first job out of college I, after I had made a good amount of money in the sales job that I was in, I was starting to explore different ways to invest and it was a journey that I was really going on and it wasn't really directed by any single person. And what I came to find out was through journaling and learning some of these financial lessons and some of these career lessons that a lot of my friends or people that I knew didn't really connect with some of those. They weren't familiar with those because they hadn't experienced it yet. And a light bulb kind of went off in my head. I, I've i always wanted to impact people positively, right? And I felt some of those lessons, as basic as they were, somebody could have benefited from them. and. Really, outside of YouTube, there's not too many ways to reach a whole bunch of people at once. And that's where it kind of spawned into the idea of a book. And that, that's exactly how it, it started. And the why essentially was exactly what I just mentioned. I was, I was inspired to impact other people. And that's, that's one of my whys, what gets me excited in the morning. And so I started transitioning a lot of my journal pieces and stories and things like that over to a Word document. And I just got started. I started writing, I started going through the process, and it, it wasn't really that organized. And probably about a year and a half, a year of doing that, I was about, I don't know, maybe halfway through the book, let's say, and I started to look for publishers, ways to get it published. And for anybody who is familiar with this or tried this before, you know there's a way to self-publish. And so the person who wrote the foreword on my book, Jeb Blunt, for anybody who's, who's familiar with him, he's written a bunch of great sales books and he was actually part of the program when I was in college. Uh, I talked to him, I talked to a couple other people in terms of advice, and a lot of people said the best way to get started is self-publishing. And in my opinion, I think that is probably one of the best ways to get started. But I'm a little dense, I'm a little hard-headed, and so I started to look for different ways to do it and go through a, a publishing house, make, make the work a little easier, right? And sure enough, by way of Instagram, I ran into somebody who owned a business, Meraki House Publishing, up in Toronto, so out of the US, that helped starter authors, no other works, no agent, that kind of thing, get the marketing pieces, the print, the read through, making sure there's no grammatical errors, all the stuff that a publisher normally does, for a little cheaper than normal. And after looking through some of the books that they had published and looking through some of the experience that they had and the entrepreneur that actually ran the company, I thought it was a good call. And I got really lucky. I sent over my transcript so for what I've writ written so far and they were ready to go. To be exact, I'm actually pulling up original emails from when I actually found the publisher. I, I found Marnie, who was her name, via Instagram and I saw that she had a bunch of success with a book called Belief is the New Black. And I emailed somebody and was interested in trying to publish through Meraki House and I said transcript earlier, this is how long this has been, It's the manuscript is finished and so I, I sent it over and that was on February 22nd, 2016. The book was published May 7th, 2016. In my opinion, it normally doesn't happen that quickly and I think some of the reasons there were the fact that I had already started to write a lot of it. I put a lot of work in terms of uh, grammar in there, even though there is a ton of errors already still, and that was read through probably like three or four times. 
but I put a lot of time into it prior and then they themselves were, were a really fast group to work with. So after I had that initial call and they read through the, the manuscript that I sent over, they were happy with it and we really got to work within the next week and then I spent a lot of time just not sleeping really and that that's definitely not good but I, I, I had to work all day and then come home and read through everything and continue writing and stuff like that so a lot of my time for the next couple months were spent finishing that up. So finding the publisher I think is one of the the most challenging pieces to it and for a lot of other groups you you start signing deals like Ryan Serhant or Jeb Blunt even the the foreword for my book and those are the times where you get to start writing and really start doing it just really for for your side hustle really call that but this wasn't necessarily going to be something that was going to bring me a bunch of of income and so i was i was i started this journey more as a passion project and it turned into something that was going to be able to impact other people the process from actually finding the publisher to published which was on may 7 2016 wasn't too challenging other than the fact like i just said it was a lot of work that's put on put in both groups had to actually read through everything there are grammatical errors there are ways that the books were set up there were things even as simple as the design that were was picked and things like that whether it's going to be a hardback or a paperback a lot of different decisions that went into it and and I think the biggest benefit to a publisher was the fact that I had somebody helping with the design, they had an in-house team, they had somebody helping with a lot of that stuff, which led to the cost. I can't remember the exact cost, I tried to go look through it, but it's been a little bit. I think it was $2,500, maybe a little less than that total for all that, and then we actually outsourced through Ingram for actually printing the books on demand and we pushed through. Amazon and Barnes and Noble. So I have both of those links in the comment section and description below so you can actually check it out and see how that worked. And I think profit wise, and this is just because we're talking about finances here, profit wise was probably about eight or nine dollars a book, which was pretty good. The books were selling probably for $19.99, I think it was. And now it's a little higher on Amazon. So actual launch day, the big thing for us was Again, not necessarily making a profit, but was getting it out to as many people as possible. So I had a lot of great support at the current company that I, or the company that I was at at the time. And they even announced it at the sales meeting. I'll never forget it. It was the coolest thing ever. And I was obviously a little, a little shy about it, but it was really cool to see the support that I was getting. And the goal was to not have people pre-order or anything like that, because what it would do was if you ordered the book on the day that it came out, you would actually make Amazon's uh, bestseller list. And so I had everybody plan to do that. And the, the cool thing about it was that I did for about 24, 36 hours, I made the Amazon bestseller list in the different categories. And that's something that we can kind of talk through, but I even have an article on the New York Times list and a lot of bestsellers list that, in my opinion, they're kind of bogus. And even for somebody that, as a reader, I will go and look through recommendations and referrals and things like that for books and then read the actual reviews to not just count on the bestseller list. Anyways, the, the book went off without a hitch. We got to push the book that day, made the bestseller list for a little while. I got to put the, the emblem on there. I think it went out as New Age Religion and then also Communication, which was really what this book was all about. Which now that I think about it, we've been talking about the book and I didn't actually explain what it's all about. You can read more about it, but essentially what I did was because we're talking about impacting other people and it came directly from my journal, I created this book that you can read in 30 days and you even have a section at the end or to, at the end of each chapter to write through some of the answers and things to your own questions after reading the chapter but essentially it was a story for day one and then what I learned and what I would like to share with everybody else and then how you responded at the end. So it was a pretty quick read. You're supposed to read it over 30 days. A lot of people didn't but it was anything from financial advice, well not even financial advice because I'm not a financial advisor but financial things that I experienced and other career experiences and things that I had gone through as a young adult already, really 18, 19 to 25, and something that I wanted to share with everybody else. So on to the actual return on investment for somebody. If you're doing this, it, it might not necessarily be for a return on investment. And, and I say that in the, the traditional form of cash, right? I, I received a massive return on investment, but it was much more emotional learning experience, mental, that kind of thing for me. 
I think I sold a little less than 125 copies, 100 copies. Again, I have to look at the numbers. And it's trickled in the last couple of years anyways. And all of a sudden I'll see like a $10 check go directly into my, my business bank account, but nothing, nothing crazy. And actually my contract ended with the Meraki House Publishing in 2019 and had to push everything over to my own LLC and run through Ingram and Amazon. With those 125, 100 copies, didn't make a profit. I probably lost money on this as a whole, but it did get me to at least one speaking engagement. It was really cool. It did get people to ask me questions about it. It did teach me a lot about writing and it gave me inspiration to write another one, which I really do want to do eventually. So I think you really got to think about what you're trying to accomplish with writing your book, especially if you're looking and Googling this right now and figuring out what, what, your goal is, which is a great segue into what are some of the things that, that I learned and some of the things that I would recommend if you're trying to write and publish a book. So the very first thing that I'm going to say is you want to figure out why you're writing it, right? And I, I think why you have a life purpose or what your goal is for life is kind of challenging. But for the book, it's it, it shouldn't be. It really shouldn't be. You should be able to identify at least who your audience is supposed to be or what you're trying to write. And I think laying that foundation up front makes it a lot easier for you to get started. And that's that's one of the most challenging parts. It's actually just starting putting pen to paper or fingers to keyboard, whatever you wanna call it. You, you gotta start somewhere and it's really hard to do that without a foundation. So figure out exactly who you're writing this book for and a general idea. And you can change it as it goes on. And a publisher, a bigger publisher might actually change it. And as you self publish, you might actually change it, right? So things happen, things change, but start out with a foundation and figuring out what you wanna get accomplished with this book. Number two here is researching as much as possible. You're already watching the YouTube video. You're already thinking through that, but start reaching out to people that you know who've written books, people who have experienced publishing in some way, people who write content for a living, have them read through things. Start digging into this while you are writing and pouring out your emotions and your feelings and everything else on your computer. It's really gonna help you really go two different ways, right? You're gonna be writing and getting things started, but you're also gonna be thinking through the actual process logistically because there's a lot more that goes into getting this book out to people, how it's getting printed, what are you gonna do for speaking engagements, if you're gonna have speaking engagements, that kind of thing. So you really wanna go two different routes out while you're getting started and it, it's not too complicated especially if you follow number one and you have a foundation of what's going on here three is understanding what this book is actually gonna do for you so for somebody like myself it wasn't gonna be a massive financial passive income stream for me it, it does create some kind of money for me but I literally could get two or three coffees with it it's it's nothing that's gonna be that massive and that was one single month of, of books now yours could be completely different you could have this amazing story about your rise to Bitcoin millionaire because you picked the right story and how other people can do it a little clickbaity but somebody might read that and you probably sell a whole bunch of copies with that said, that could create some kind of passive income stream for you. I think what the book really does is provide a stepping stone to other things that you really want. One thing for me is, as I mentioned, my why impacting other people in a positive way. I love to get up and share my story and talk through other people's stories and give people tools to actually get something done. So when I got to do that speaking engagement, I, I got really excited and the reason was because I had the book. The book allowed me to get in and I actually get to give co copies away for free to a lot of those high school students. So the book is a stepping stone to other pieces and maybe even your second book, which could be passive income. So I think setting your expectations to what you want to get, you, you want to have those, those goals of what this book is going to become, but understanding this probably isn't going to make you retire early, which is okay, but it's a stepping stone and moving in the right direction for what you do want. The fourth thing I want to share is the amount of work that you have to put in during and then after post publishing. It's a big deal once you publish this book. And I think the, the publisher, Meraki House Publishing did a great job helping me up to that using social media, really going after that. But one thing I didn't do, and I wish I would have done differently is 
approaching social media a little more aggressively, really pushing this book. And there's so many other ways of publishing a book. I, I've got a couple of people that do Airbnb and have created a guide for Airbnb, and they've done a great job pushing that on on how to invest in real estate. And I think it's pretty impressive with how they did it. And they didn't use a publisher, and they're making a really solid income stream from doing just that. So I think you need to understand that you're gonna have to put in work post publishing to really start continuing to push this book. And that really comes down to, again, what you want as a goal, what you're doing laying the foundation and how you want to continue bringing this book out there. I, I felt really happy and successful with getting the book out and bringing a passion project to other people. And that was, that was good for me. I, I want to create another one to do, uh, to make an even larger impact, but it, I think I could have done a better job on the social media part and really pushing it too. So it definitely doesn't end once you publish the book and that's something to keep in mind. Prepare and think through the strategy on actually approaching marketing. I think it'll be a little easier when you have the publisher helping you out. But if you do self-publish, which Amazon has a great service for that, I believe Ingram does as well, but both do a really good job of uh, providing you a foundation for the publishing piece, but if you don't, you do have to go find a publisher and go in that route. If you don't have experience with finding an agent, which I know some people actually do, and there's a, a reason for that because I have really connect connections with larger publishers. If you're a smaller author, it's probably not gonna be something that you're gonna have to run into, but there's, there's always that chance. That's all I got for you guys today. I really hope this was an informative video, and if you are trying to figure out if you wanna write or publish or even start your book, then this helped you kind of get some kind of direction. Remember that the hardest part is actually just getting started and that's what you need to do. Build that foundation, figure out what you want to do and start writing your book. That's as simple as that. And you don't have to go the route of publishing. You can do self-publishing. You got a lot of different options. If you have any comments, questions, things like that, drop them in the comment section below. I left a couple resources for you in the description below. And of course, the link to the book, if you guys are interested, just excuse the massive amount of grammatical errors in there. I hope you guys have an excellent rest of your weekend. And if you enjoyed this content, go ahead and hit like, because it really helps get out to other people who are trying to figure out how to write their own book. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you like any kind of financial freedom or any kind of personal advice on life experience. Again, have a great weekend. Talk to you guys soon. See ya.